Hey brothers and sisters, today I want to address the five major prophetic events that we've seen in 2023. Um, I have a poll going on on my community page that you can take um, to vote for what you think is the most significant prophetic event in 2023. Also my telegram page. Everything that I'm going to be covering in this video I already covered in the live stream. But I do realize some people prefer to have more of a visual along with what I'm talking about. So 2023 was definitely a year of stage setting. So I'm going to cover five main events in 2023 that brings us closer to the tribulation period. Number one is spiritual deception and apostasy. The Asbury revival began in February of 2023. Originally, I had thought what I was witnessing was a genuine move of God. But when I started researching the theological and doctrinal beliefs of Asbury College and what they were practicing, I changed my stance. I believe what we saw was called the spiritual formation movement and a man-made revival based on emotions, music, and false theology. I explained in one of my videos and in a live stream that I did in February, that the college was observing Catholic Mass, or the Eucharist, endorsing New Age practices, and lacking any biblical gospel in the preaching. They support a social gospel, new apostolic reformation theology, women pastors, and they affirm LGBTQ identity. This shouldn't surprise us considering it is a Methodist college. And this past year, 7,659 United Methodist churches split from the denomination over this LGBTQ issue. Now regarding Asbury eschatology, they support NAR theology which teaches Kingdom Now theology. This says that the church must build the Kingdom of God on earth before Jesus comes through a social gospel. Now why is this prophetic? We are warned in scripture of another Jesus and that people would not endure sound doctrine. This is exactly what we witnessed as many who were questioning the revival were attacked. This also furthers the ecumenical movement and blurs the lines between religions and opens the younger generation up to spiritual practices not found in scripture. We know the Antichrist will use deception to win the masses. Asbury revealed that people are indeed hungry for something more and a fresh move of God. But how many are willing to dig deep enough and examine whether these things are truly of God? Many flock to the university to experience the presence of God. This reminds me of millions of Catholics who flock to the apparition sites of Mary to see what all the fuss is about. Indeed, Satan is a master deceiver. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And then 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 says, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. The second significant sign that we see in 2023 is the building of a global economy. Dramatic bank collapses made 2023 the biggest year ever for bank failures. Before Silicon Valley Bank collapsed in March, 
It had been 28 months since a U.S. bank went up in smoke, the longest stretch without a failure in more than 15 years. The banks that went under had $548.7 billion of combined assets, the largest total ever in a single year. Prophetically, we see a destabilized economy and a more centralized monetary system in the future as a result of bank failures. We will see less brick and mortar buildings and more digitized banking, which leads to other huge developments in 2023, the FedNow system. The Federal Reserve announced in December that FedNow service participation continues to show strong growth and diversity heading into the new year with 331 institutions headquartered in 45 states and ranging in size from under 500 million to over $3 trillion in assets. The FedNow service launched in July with 35 participating institutions. The Federal Reserve Banks expect strong network growth to continue in 2024. Prophetically, this fits into the building of the beast system talked about in Revelation 13. The Federal Reserve Banks developed the FedNow service to facilitate nationwide reach of instant payment services by financial institutions regardless of size or geographic location. Around the clock, every day of the year, through financial institutions participating in the FedNow service, businesses and individuals can send and receive instant payments at any time of day, and recipients have full access to funds immediately. So this system will be used in some shape or form to help implement the global economy. Revelation 13, 16 through 17 says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Number three is artificial intelligence made huge waves in 2023. The findings from a survey, which was in the field in May, April 2023, show that despite Gen AI's public availability, experimentation with the tools is already relatively common. And respondents expect the new capabilities to transform their industries. Gen AI has captured interest across the business population. Individuals across regions, industries, and seniority levels are using Gen AI for work and outside of work. 79% of all respondents say they have had at least some exposure to Gen AI, either for work or outside of work, and 22% say they are regularly using it in their own work. While reported use is quite similar across seniority levels, it is highest among respondents working in the technology sector and those in North America. At the beginning of the year, the rise of ChatGPT sparked discussions about the future of search engines like Google. Google's business may have a maximum lifespan of two years due to the growing popularity of controversial AI like ChatGTP. The global landscape includes a competitive race among countries and companies to lead in AI development. In the whirlwind of AI arms race, the U.S. and China have emerged as the fiercest of competitors. A surge in the development and deployment of AI-controlled drones capable of selecting and attacking human targets is observed worldwide, as reported by the New York Times, referred to as lethal autonomous weapons, or killer robots. These devices are being used by nations like the U.S., China, and Israel, despite ethical and legal concerns. Critics warn of potential threats to humanity and international security. So what does this mean prophetically? Listen to this from technocracy.news. Quote, If there ever was a moment in history when globalists 
have been unable to contain their unsettling glee, it was the moment that artificial intelligence became a focus of public discourse. It's clear that the World Economic Forum worships AI, lavishing the technology with praise and describing it as the end all be all of human industry. AI, they claim, will change the world so rapidly that most people will not be able to keep up with the advancements. AI will help serve as the thread that binds all the moving parts in the future beast system during the tribulation. I also reported in videos about the use of AI to censor and prosecute people. The Antichrist will use this technology to dominate globally. Revelation 13, 13 through 15, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Alright, number four, UFOs and aliens unveiled. One of the biggest stories of 2023 was the rapidly evolving conversation around UFOs. Whistleblower David Grush claimed that the Pentagon has a UFO retrieval program. Congress held a hearing on UFOs and worked to mandate UFO disclosure. David Grush also alleged in July that the U.S. has retrieved non-human biological matter from the pilots of the crafts, adding, that was the assessment of people with direct knowledge on the UAP program I talked to that are currently still on the program. So the delusion of aliens and the narrative that we are not alone continues to pick up steam in the media and around the world. Most notably, the story from Las Vegas in May of a family that reported that two 10-foot aliens had landed in their backyard, quote, I believe I saw something that wasn't from Earth, the youngest son Joshua said. The family remained anonymous for months out of fear of being ridiculed but said that since their UFO visit, strangers have flocked to their house to see where the aliens landed, with some even climbing over the fence. Prophetically, this uptick in sighting speaks directly to the delusion that aliens are trying to communicate with us and setting the stage for the lie that the rapture did not happen, but an alien abduction. Satan is increasing his efforts to bolster the narrative that aliens are real and we must be concerned about them. As believers, we know this is a demonic deception talked about in the last days. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12 says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all might be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And lastly, number five, further destabilization in Israel. In July, tens of thousands of protesters marched into Jerusalem and hundreds of thousands of Israelis took to the streets in Tel Aviv and other cities in a last-ditch show of force aimed at blocking Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Lapid said, quote, In its 75th year, Israel is in a fateful struggle for its character, for its democracy, and for the status of its rule of law. Israel was divided from within and civil unrest ensued during the summer. But Israel was about to be changed forever in the fall of 2023 from a surprise attack from Hamas. And so we have the current ongoing war in Israel to wipe out these Iranian proxies.
What does this destabilization mean for Israel prophetically? We have seen a rise or more of an uncovering of anti-Semitism across the globe and in our American universities. A satanic opposition against Jews and Israelis has been forged to paint them as the bad guys. As this hatred towards Jews increases, the prophecies of Jacob's trouble and the Antichrist persecution of Jews in the last three and a half years of the tribulation comes into clearer focus. Jeremiah 30, 1 through 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor, and all faces turn pale? Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. And then we read in Zechariah 13, 8 and 9, And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord is my God. And lastly, Revelation 12, 13-17. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel, who gave birth to the male child, Jesus Christ. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of its mouth like a flood after the woman, Israel, that he may cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Also, as war increases, peace and security will be the cry of the world, which sets the stage for the man of sin to confirm the Daniel 9.27 covenant. The only peace in the Middle East on the horizon will be a false peace, followed by peace being taken from the earth during the second sealed judgment. As this false peace is broken, Gog and Magog will be near fulfillment and the campaign of Armageddon ending in the second coming of Christ. All five of these major events in 2023 accelerate the stage setting of the tribulation. They don't specifically speak to an exact time frame for when the rapture will occur, but the shadows are growing larger and darker and the time is drawing near. Remember, the rapture is an imminent event, meaning it can happen any time and we are to be prepared, whether the Lord decides to take us today or five years from now. Maranatha.